All right, are you ready? Let's talk potential energy diagrams. So potential energy diagrams show the reaction pathway. So in a potential energy diagram, the pathway shows changes in potential energy. So you can see right here, it's labeled with potential energy. Reaction pathway may say time, okay? And you can see as the reaction begins and proceeds, there are changes in potential energy along the way. Two major types, we can have axothermic and endothermic. Remember, axothermic energy is released. It's on the product side. So what happens is the energy level of the reactants and the energy level of the products will not be the same. When it's exothermic, the energy level of the reactants will be higher. You go down, you give off energy, release it as we move to the products. So you will see starting up high and then ending lower when you have an exothermic reaction. So the reactants will have a higher potential energy and the products will have a lower potential energy because energy is being released. When we have endothermic, you can see we have the potential energy of the reactants and the potential energy of the products. And you can see that amount has increased because energy is being absorbed, okay? So the energy of the reactants will always be lower and the energy of the products will always be higher because energy is being absorbed. Okay, so how do we read a potential energy diagram? So there's going to be a pattern. It doesn't matter if it is exothermic or endothermic. So here is an exothermic and here is an endothermic. Same pattern. So there's going to be a line for reactants and a line for products and then a kind of a bump in the middle. So we're going to talk about what that is. So how do we find the reactants? The reactants are what you start so right here, okay, so in this case, it's labeled A and B, so we're starting with A and B, and we look for the number. So the potential energy of the reactants in this example, 40 kilojoules, okay? What would the potential energy of the products be? Well, this is what we started with, reactants. This is what we're ending with, products, in this case, C plus D. And I go across and right here, so the potential energy of the products would be 20 kilojoules. If I were going to represent this with an arrow, I would go from the bottom up to here. So that represents the potential energy of the products. All right, what is the activated complex? The activated complex is the tippy top. So what happens is I get these reactants and then they're going to interact in some way. They need to absorb some energy, a certain amount of energy called the activation energy, and then they form this activated complex at the very tip top. So how do I represent it? I would go from the bottom all the way to up here. That would be the potential energy of the activated complex. And I can go across and read the number. So it is 100 kilojoules in this case, right? So the activated complex, tip top. All right, what about the activation energy? So the activation energy is what it takes to get from the reactants to the tip top. All right, so let's review. We had reactants here, activated complex, the tip top up here. So activation energy means it takes us from where we were with reactants up to the top. It does not include this. This little bit right here is just the energy of the reactants. That's where I'm starting. So the activation energy takes me from the reactants to the tip top. So in this case, it would be 100 minus 40 all the way to the tip top, but I have to start from where the reactants were. So 60 kilojoules, okay? Now, the change in energy, the heat of reaction, or delta H all mean the same thing, okay? How do we find it? We find it by taking products minus reactants. It matters the order. One is going to give us a negative value when it's exothermic, the other is going to give us a positive value when it's endothermic. 
So the order matters. You can always check because you should know by the shape of the graph, because what is this? Starts high, they all come up here, it ends low. So I should know that this one is exotherm. Hopefully when I calculate delta H, I do get a negative number. So let's see what happens. So we do products minus reactants. So I need the potential energy of the products, which is 20, minus the potential energy of the reactants, which is 40, and that will give me negative 20 kilojoules. And I know it's supposed to be negative because I can tell by the shape of this that it's exotherm. Okay, so put it all together. We have potential energy of the reactants up to here. We have potential energy of the products up to here. We have potential energy of the activated complex all the way up here. We have activation energy taking us from the reactants to the top of the activated complex. And then we have delta H, change in enthalpy, heat of reaction, where we do products minus reactants. It's always products minus reactants. In this case, I know my answer should be negative because I can tell it's exothermic. All right, now you can ask questions about the reverse reaction. Don't worry, it's not too much harder. It takes a little bit of big brain work. So when I look at this potential energy diagram, I have the forward reaction where I have reactants, activated complex, products. This I can tell is exothermic because I start high and end low. Now the reverse reaction means I start here. This would be where the reactants are still go to the activated complex, and then this is where the products would be. So this one is endothermic. So when I have the forward reaction exothermic, the reverse reaction is endothermic. Okay. Here's another example. So reactants of the forward reaction, products of the forward reaction. Activation energy for the forward reaction, but look, for the reverse reaction, this is where the reactants are. So I need to go all this way, okay, to get to the top of the activated complex. So the values will not be the same. So let's look at an example. So again, all the features of this forward reaction. This, potential energy of the reactants. This, potential energy of the products. This potential energy of the activated complex. This, activation energy for that forward reaction. This right here is the heat of reaction. Remember, products minus reactants. So it's that in between, the space in between products and reactants, okay? So what is D? Well, D takes us from the products to the top. So that is the activation energy for the reverse reaction. Okay, so the forward reaction is exothermic. So what is the reverse reaction? Starts low, look at that, ends up high. So the reverse reaction is endothermic. Okay, so now let's look at the reverse reaction. What is the potential energy of the reactants? Well, remember, in the forward reaction, this would be reactants, and this would be products, but I'm talking reverse reaction. So they flip places. This becomes reactants, and this becomes products. So I start down here, go up to the activated complex, and I end over here. So the reverse reaction, remember, is endothermic. So what would the potential energy of the reactants be? Well, they're over here. So it would be this bit right here, okay? This right here. So from 100 to 200, so it would be 100. What would the potential energy of the products be for the reverse reaction? It would be this line right here. Remember the reverse reaction, here's the products. So it would be from 100 to 400, so that would be 300. 
Okay, so for the reverse reaction, what is the potential energy of the activated complex? Well, that's the same. It's still up here. So it would go all the way from here up to here. So it would go from 100 to 500. So it would be 400. What about for the reverse reaction? What is the activation energy? So remember, starting from reactants and for the reverse reaction, our reactants are over here, all the way to the top of the activated complex. So from 200 to 500, so 300 kilojoules. Okay, so what is the change in energy or heat for the reverse reaction? Remember, the order matters. We have to do products minus reactants. So what was the potential energy of the products over here, right, from 100 to 400, so it was 300, 300, sorry, terrible writing there, minus, what is the potential energy of the reactants, 100, because it was from 100 to 200. So I'm going to get 200 kilojoules as my answer. Does that make sense? Well, yes, it does, because I know it's endothermic and it's supposed to be positive. All right, so here's a potential energy diagram. Which is the heat of reactant? It's a sandwich. It's between reactants and products. So here is um, reactants right here products right here, the sandwich in between. So, number two. The energy absorbed and the energy released during a chemical reaction are best represented by what we've been looking at. Mental energy diagrams. All right, which one is exothermic? Start high and low, releasing energy. This one. Okay, here's a potential energy diagram. Uh, each interval represents 40 kilojoules. What is the heat of reaction? Remember, heat of reaction is the sandwich between products and reactants. So here we have products, here we have reactants. So it's this space right here in between them, oops, right here. So it only covers one little line, one interval. So I know it's 40, so I know these are wrong. Okay, is it going to be positive or negative? Well, let's look. We started low and we ended high, so positive 40. All right, chemical cold packs are often used to reduce swelling. So here we have a picture. My tip is don't read all the right reading unless you know you need to. So it says, which represents the potential energy of the products? So do I need to read this up here to answer that? Absolutely not. So potential energy of the products should be D. Okay, so again, don't read all this blah, 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 unless you need to. Go to the question. Which potential energy interval in the diagram represents the activation energy of the forward reaction? So activation energy for the forward goes from the reactants to the top of the activated complex. What letter is that? B. Okay. In terms of potential energy, which expression defines the heat of reaction, the delta H, the change in energy? Well, that would be products minus reactants, not divided, minus and products minus reactants. And there you have it, potential energy diagrams. I hope that you learned something new today.